Hello and welcome back to another Flutter tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing how to filter a list view based on an input from a search box. So this is a demo tab that we are going to build. Here you can see that you can filter a list view by name or email. And you can see that the filtering starts when the user actually stops for a certain amount of seconds after typing. All right. In that way, we are not putting a lot of pressure on the system on every keystroke. So let's see how we can do it. As usual, I'll be starting with an empty template. The first thing is I'll be showing the service URL that I am going to use. So this is a service URL. I'll be providing the link in the description. So let me show you that. Here you can see that uh, there are a lot of records which has an ID, name, username, and email. So we will be using only ID, name, and email. Okay, so first thing we have to do is we have to create the model class for each record. So I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to name it user. Okay, and the class name will be user with the integer ID, string name, and string email. And let's write a constructor. It will accept the ID, name, and email. Now we will have a factory method that actually maps the value from JSON to the user object. So that will be a map of string and dynamic as a parameter, and it will return a user object by extracting the keys from the JSON. So ID name so name is a string and email is also a string now let's write a service class to get the data from the service so services dot dot and let's import the necessary packages the dot convert package and we also need the http library package so make sure you add the plugin in the pubspec.yaml file I have already added it. I'll be providing the link in the description. All right. So let's go back to the services class and import the HTTP library. And let's import the user as well. Let's declare the service URL first. So that's our URL and I'm going to write a method to actually call the service and parse the users. So get users that is an asynchronous call. So let's wrap it inside a try catch method to catch the exceptions. All right. So final response is equal to all right http dot get with our URL and let's check if the response dot status code is equal to two hundred then we will parse the response and get the users list so let's write a method parse users which will take the response body as the parameter otherwise we will throw an exception. error all right so let's write the method so that is static method it will return a list of users so final parsed is equal to json dot decode decode the response body and cast it to map of string and dynamic since we have both integers and strings in the response and return parse dot map each user to a user object so call user dot from json and return the list okay so let's go back to our main file and uh, let's import the necessary files 
So import data sync and import user import services. All right. Okay. Now let's create a variable to hold the list of users. So users is equal to new list and let's write the let's override the init state method and initialize the users variable with the data from the server. So call services dot get users dot then so when it returns let's name the variable users from server and call set state on the users variable all right and users is equal to users from server So now we have the list of users. Let's add the list view now. So for that, I'm adding a column widget. So the first child is an expanded widget with child list view dot builder with a padding. Let's set it to 10.0, and the item count is the users count. So users dot length and the item builder will have the build context and the index. Okay, so let's return the view for each row in the list. So that is a card. Let's add a padding widget with the padding of 10. And the child is another column widget. Set the main axis alignment to start and cross axis alignment to start as well. And the children, let's add a text that will show the username dot name. And I'm going to set some style. So text style with a font size 16 and the color dot black. Okay, let's give some spacing with a height of 5. I'm going to copy that and change that to email and the color to gray and the size to 14. Okay, let me reload that. Okay, now we have the list of users. Now we will add a text field to search in the list. So text field with a decoration content padding of 10 and the hint text and the name or email. And let's add the on change to event. Let's leave it empty for now. Now we will create a list of users, filtered users. We go to new list and on init we will assign the users to the filtered users and we will change the list filter item to filter users dot length and the data also to filter users dot name okay now let's reload the app okay now it's listing all right okay now go to the on change event of the text field and call users dot where now we are going to filter the users array and we will check if the name is matching the string that the user has typed or the email then we will return that user and convert all to a list okay reload the app let's try filtering okay so for every keystroke is filtering but we don't want it in every keystroke so we will wait for the user to stop and then we will start filtering so for that uh, we will write a new class rebouncer and declare a variable milliseconds 
and a call back. And a timer. And the constructor will take the milliseconds. All right. And a run method. That will take the action. And we will check if the timer is not null, then we will cancel the timer. Otherwise, we will create, we will start a new timer with the milliseconds and the action callback. All right. Now create a variable debouncer is equal to new debouncer, and let's set the milliseconds to five hundred milliseconds okay and go to the on change callback of the text field and call debouncer dot run and the action let's cut and paste that inside okay now reload the app okay we have the list now so let's start searching so it will wait for 500 milliseconds to start searching. Okay, so this is useful when you want to call a service on every keystroke. Okay, let's change that to 2000 milliseconds, that is two seconds. And so that you can see the difference. I'm reloading the app. Okay, let's start searching again. So it's waiting for two seconds and then start searching. Okay, now we can see the difference. Okay, I'm changing it back to 500. Okay. So we have filtered using email as well. So let's try entering an email. Okay, sincere. Okay, so that is also working. Let's change the email to all lowercase. Okay, perfect. So that's how you filter a list view in Flutter. So you can have a debouncer kind of class to delay the searching so that you can uh, put less load on the system or the server. Like if you want to call a service on every keystroke, so that will not be a good practice. So this is the best way to do it. So that's all in this video. If you liked the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Hit the bell icon for notifications. Also, please leave your valuable comments in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.